Jeremiah chapter 36. And it came to pass in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, again dates the son of Jos Josiah, the king of Judah, that this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Take thee a roll of a book, and write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel. Well, the Bible is written by man. Yes. Jeremiah 36, 2 says it is written by man. So is Shakespeare. So is all the textbooks in every school in the world. But, it says that this word came unto Jeremiah from the Lord. Inspiration. You don't have that in the textbooks. You don't have that in Shakespeare. You don't have that in all the books in the book in the bookstores. Even the modern Bible, they don't have from the Lord. So yes, man wrote the Bible. The Holy Spirit used man as a pen, and the ink was the Holy Spirit. Take the roll of a book and write there in all the words that I have spoken unto thee. God has spoken. Jeremiah writes. Unto thee against Israel. And that's what we've been reading. What we're going to read now. Against Judah. Against all the nations. From the day I spake unto thee. From the days of jo Josiah. Even unto this day. So Jeremiah is writing Jeremiah. God told him to do it. God told him what to say. Jeremiah just penned it. Listen. Jeremiah. Is. The Lord's secretary. God is dictating to Jeremiah. Write this down. <coughs> this is a fun chapter. Because we're going to get into more great detail. We just broke into two verses. And we've got 32 to do with. It's like. You're in a kitchen. Your wife or your mother or your father says, you want to write, get crackers, put it on the grocery list, and you go over there and you get the pen and you write crackers. Well, man wrote it. Yeah, you were told to. What's the difference? From the day I, God, spank unto thee, from the days of Josiah, even unto this day. It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I purpose to do unto them. That they may return every man from his evil way. This verse attacks Calvinism. God did not preordain Israel, Judah, Jerusalem to be damned. If God predamned the Jews here, why would he have sent Jeremiah? If God predamned the pre uh, uh, John chapter three, this is condemnation. Pre -condemn, con condemned man, why would he have sent Jesus Christ? Wouldn't his words just be enough? God sends Jeremiah to Judah and Jerusalem that there may be still a chance there is hope. Now watch. That I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. There is free will. There is Calvin being kicked in the butt by Jeremiah by God speaking. God reaches out to everybody in every age in some form or another by using men to say, this is what you're supposed to do. Noah said, get in the ark. Abraham told his children to be circumcised. Moses gave them the law. Jesus Christ gave us the way, the truth, and the life. No one is pre-damned. 
Even Judas could have had a, had a chance if he didn't go to the priest. But God knew Judas was going to do it. God knew Pilate would be more than anxious to put Jesus on the cross. God knew Pharaoh wouldn't listen and it, all the plagues upon Egypt. But he never pre-damned or pre-condemned them to do it. But God knew what they were going to do and you can spin wheels. Because as a human being, we can't comprehend the mind and knowledge of God yet. Free will. God already knows by Jeremiah 52 that they're in Babylon, that the city is destroyed. But I'm going to give them a chance. They're not going to listen, but I'm going to give them a chance. Let's have more fun. Then Jeremiah called Baruch, the son of Neriah, and Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah. Uh-oh. Now you have a man who's writing from a man from God. God is speaking to Jeremiah, Jeremiah is speaking to Baruch, and Baruch's writing it down. Or, or. Now what does God say about that? What does the Holy Spirit tell us? All the words of the Lord. How's that? Baruch didn't miss a word, Jeremiah didn't miss a word. This is a word we find copied. Which he had spoken unto him upon a roll of a book. And that's that's how they saying the rolls were the pages. We're going to see that even later. And Jeremiah commanded Baruch saying, I am shut up. I cannot go into the house of the Lord. He's in jail. He can't go to the temple. Therefore go thou and read in the roll, here we go, which thou hast written from my mouth. The words of the Lord. Look at that. And then when you today you get a King James Bible, it is written from it is spoken from Jeremiah to Baruch, written down and put to a printing press of some form to be put into our laps. Quite interesting. From my mouth, the words of the Lord in the ears of the people in the Lord's house upon the fasting day, and I got a Leviticus 16, 29, 23 to 27 to 32, a fasting day. So there was a day that they proclaimed fast. And also thou read them in the ears of all Judah come out of their city. So Baruch is going to the house of the Lord, the temple, to street preach. And what's he do? He reads Jeremiah. I can't street preach. I can't preach to people. Just open up your Bible and start reading. John chapter 3 is the best one. And grow from there. Pick a passage in Romans. Psalms 23, just pick it up and say, Attention all you peoples, I like to read to you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's all Baruch did. All he did was pick up the roll and read. It may be there will be, uh, it may be they will present their supplication before the Lord. This is Jeremiah speaking. And will return everyone from his evil way. Now he's speaking from verse 3 of God. For great is the anger and the fury that the Lord has pronounced against his people. God and Jeremiah still have hope in these people. How can you think about Calvinism? How can you say that God is all finished with the Jews, when he sends Jeremiah, he says, maybe they'll return. Maybe this time they'll get right. And Jeremiah says, you know what? After listening to God speak, maybe this is the time. 
Maybe they'll see my condition in jail. Maybe Baruch will have something in the Holy Spirit. Maybe this is the time. <clears throat> and Baruch, the son of Neriah, did according to all Jeremiah the prophet commanding him. Reading in the book of the words of the Lord, even though it has been spoken to Jeremiah, spoken to Baruch, written down by Baruch. It is called the, the book of the words of the Lord. What's that book of the words of the Lord called? It's called the Bible, the King James Bible. There it is. But he got his second hand. Yeah, wait till we finish the end of the chapter. And it came to pass in the fifth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. The ninth month, and this is dated, that they proclaim a fast before the Lord to all the people in Jerusalem. And to all the people that came from the cities of Judah unto Jerusalem. So, here's a festival of all the people and God's going to send his prophet to go preach to them. So, find out when your city's having something important and when they all gather for their thing, you bring the word of God and you tell them. Then read Baruch, in the book of the words of Jeremiah, in the house of the Lord, first reading of the Bible by Baruch. First time. He's in the Lord's house. He's in the temple. In the chamber of Jeremiah, the son of Shaphan, the scribe. In the higher court, at the entry to the new gate of the Lord's house, in the ears of all the people. Man, the God is, God is so specific on this. Do you realize this first reading, this this roll of the book is going to be burned? Uh oh, I told you what happened. Do you realize we have the date that this happened and yet we don't have the date of Jesus' birth? How's that? It is dated that when this roll is read before the people, before the nation is destroyed by Babylon, we are dating a book that will be burned and yet we don't know to celebrate happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear Jesus we don't know when when Micaiah the son of Gemariah the son of Shaphan had heard out of the book all the words of the Lord. See, words of the Lord. Gotta keep stressing that. Mark the word. Mark the book. Mark everything that has to do with God speaking them. It's all over this chapter. Then he went down to the king's house, into the scribe's chamber. That's where they copied the Bible. Lo, all the princes sat there, even Elishama the scribe, and Deliah the son of Shephiah, and El Nathan the son of Akbar, and they know their names, and Gedariah the son of Shaphan, and then Zedekiah the son of Hananiah, and all the princes. There's, there's a union meeting of people here. There's a board of directors meeting. There's a whole group of people. And then my Okay, I probably said his name twice wrong. Declared unto them all the words that he had heard. When Beirut read the book in the ears of the people. Uh-oh, there's getting action now. What good does it do to go out and preach on the street? Maybe somebody will take what you say and go home to a bunch of people and go to work. And, uh, I heard this guy preach about the Bible today. Yeah, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And Hell this and hell that and you know, oh Jesus is the way or blah blah blah. Now look at this. Let's look at this now. My KI, whatever his name is, God knows, is quoting from Beirut, which Baruch got from Jeremiah by mouth, which God which Jeremiah got it from God by his mouth. And only once was it written down. Everything else was 
by voice, by oral. God, Jeremiah, Beirut, and Mike Micaiah, I'm going to mess his name up. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, it shall be established. Look at that. you got three men in this book that's going to be burned. God established what Jeremiah wrote in chapter 36 by three men. And it was only written once. Therefore all the princes sat, sent Jehudai, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Shemaniah, the son of Cushai, unto Baruch, and saying, Take in thy hand the roll wherein thou hast read in the ears of the people, and come. Now he's getting an invitation to the board meeting. He's getting an invitation to the gathering of the princes. He's being called before the Senate in the United States of America. And a nation that's completely destroyed, who's completely in idolatry, who's completely in witchcraft, who's completely in sin, who has completely turned their way from God and walked after Baal and serving the Queen of Heaven, they're saying, we want to hear the word. Don't give up. Keep preaching. Do you think Baruch had any idea he'd be called before the princes? You think Jeremiah had any idea? Jeremiah has been before the kings. And they said unto him, Sit down now and read it, the second reading. This is the second time this book has read. How many people have witnessed this word? All the people that were in the temple were the gathering from Judah, all the people, because there was a fact. Now you got the prince and his company, you got the scribes. How many people have witnessed to this word being read, which Baruch written down from the mouth of Jeremiah, from the mouth of God? And the scribes accepted it. And I thought Micaiah accepted it. not bad. Scholars don't accept it today. So Beirut read it in their ear. Now it came to pass when they heard all the words. You know that God picks the word. He doesn't he does not play Scrabble when it comes to the Bible. He picks out words as they should be all the words. In verse 4 and Beirut wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words. They were afraid. Uh-oh. Conviction. Both one and an, one and a other. One, that's one and other. You want to say one and another, but one and other. And said unto Beirut, We will surely tell the king all these words. Oh, we're going to move on even more. Beirut has stepped into the ministry where Jeremiah has been put in prison and look at the results he's getting. And they asked Beirut saying, tell us now, how did, how didst thou write all these words at his mouth? They knew it was Jeremiah. They knew Jeremiah dictated it to him. They're just saying, okay, how'd you do it? And they wrote answer and said, he pronounced all these originals unto me. And it's no. He pronounced all these words unto me with his mouth. And watch this. And I wrote them with ink in the book. How hard is that? And God yet told you the inspiration of the book of Jeremiah. Through two men. One by breath and one by pen. 
So I said wrote with ink. Ink is the Holy Spirit. Some of the inks in some of your Bibles are red, aren't they? The blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses us from all sins. Yeah, of all colors. Why did they choose the words of Christ in red? Why are the words in the Bible in black? For all have sinned, come to show the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Our, our, our righteousness is filthy rags. Then said the princes unto Baruch, Go hide thee, thou and Jeremiah. Well, he's in jail. And let no man know where ye be. I don't know why they're hiding him. They're fearing. Fear has come upon them. There's so much fear that they're stepping up to the king. The magicians step up to Pharaoh and say, Will you just let these people go? Our city is destroyed. That's the only time the magicians ever did anything right. And they went into the king, into the court. But they laid up the roll in the chamber of Elishama, the scribe, and told all the words in the ears of the king. They are protecting the Bible that is written by a man that came from the mouth of man that came from the mouth of God. They're protecting it. They don't want anybody to get a hold of this thing and destroy it. They've locked it up for protection because they're going to bring it out. Do you protect your word of God? I have seen the Bible being placed on car roofs and leaving the... the driveway of the church falling off to the road i have seen kids come come out of church with their bibles and toss their bibles across the basketball court sliding how do you treat your bible you left it out in the rain i've seen those bibles too i've seen well, i've seen places where you know it takes about a half hour to find the bibles on sunday morning So the king sent Jehudai to fetch the roll. That's what the form to the, the writings were. And he took it out of Elishama, the scribe's chamber. The scribe, that is who's in charge of the writings. They gave the word of Jeremiah written by Beirut. They gave it to a reliable man to hold it. You better hold this thing with your life. And Jehudai read it in the ears of the king and in the ears of all the princes which stood beside the king. Now it's being read to them. How many people have had this word being read to them? Can you imagine all the Bible scholars if God were to call? You know what I, mean? I know some of these people are going to go to hell. But imagine if God called all these people up who have heard this word and said, I want you, I want you to testify to these idiot scholars. About the word of God that came from Beirut, which came from the mouth of Jeremiah, which came from my mouth. You guys want to testify to? How many people would be standing? There's more than two or three witnesses. Now the king sat in the winter house in the ninth month. And this would be their December. The winter house, I would assume, was kind of house that, you know, he went when it was warm or something. And there was a fire on the hearth, or hearth, however you want to say it, burning before him, so it's cold. So I don't think the shepherds were out there with their sheep when it's too cold, that the king even has to go down to Florida, wherever Florida is in Judah. You know, what the king did was he became a, a, uh, oh, what was it, a snowbird. Oh, here comes the cold weather. Got to move down south. Even where he goes, he needs a fire. He still needs a fire down in Daytona Beach. And if, you, and if you're ever going to come down to Florida, don't get rid of your winter clothes. You're going to need them. Like I almost did. But get back to the Bible. And it came to pass that when Jehudai had read three or four leaves, and that's, you know, what you call a loose leaf notebook, where you get the word from. That's what the pages were called. So he got three or four pages into Jeremiah. He cut it with a penknife and cast it into the fire.
that was on the hearth or hearth until all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. This is the third time this book has been read. And my friend, if I can say with another teaching kind of smiles and the towers and preachers, the originals had been burned. <gasps> Uh-oh, you cannot find the originals of Jeremiah. They're ashes. Did you just read that? The originals have been burnt by Jehudai. How are you going to get the well you gotta get the originals? How can you get the originals of Jeremiah? They're burnt. So you should not be holding the book of Jeremiah in your hands. But we're not done yet. Ooh, excuse me. Sorry. Yet they were not afraid. Um where did it say they were afraid of here? Verse 16, Now it came to pass when they had heard all the words, they were afraid both one another and said to Baruch. What happened? The leader of the nation turned them off. This guy that led the nation, because he allowed Jehudai, the king allowed Jehudai to take the book and cast it into the fire as it's being read to him. He didn't do nothing about it, and then you know what? Fear went away. He saw it with Pharaoh. He see it with uh, Jehoiakim. He saw it with Pilate. Yet they were not afraid, nor rent their garments. That would be a sign of, of you know, repentance, getting right. Neither the king nor any of his servants that heard all these words. Now, what about the princes that we read about in uh, verse 16? They're not there, I don't think. So their fear may be still amongst them to do right. Because it says servants. Servants are a lot different from scribes and princes. Notice how the Bible says that. Everybody that was in that room with the kings, we don't need to be afraid. King's not afraid. Nevertheless, El Nathan and Deliah and Gina, Gina Mariah had made intercession to the king that he would not burn the roll, but he would not hear them. Here are three men saying, King, don't do it. But he wouldn't listen. But the king commanded Jeremiah, the son of Hamelech, and Sarariah, the son of Azrael, and Shemaliah, the son of Adirdeo, to take Baruch and the, the scribe. He's a scribe. He is authorized by God to do what he did from the mouth of Jeremiah to write the word of God. How do you like that one? By the way, do you remember who Jeremiah was? He was a Levite. He was a priest of the Levite family. And Jeremiah the prophet. But the Lord hid them. You know, every time they wanted to get Jesus, Jesus, he, they hid him. They couldn't find him. So we're done. No, we're not. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. After that, the king had burned the roll. The words which Beirut wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah says, look at that again. There's the verbally inspired original. And God backed it up the second time in this chapter. Take thee again another role. Now this is like Moses the second time with the commandments. Exodus 34, 1. Moses, you broke the, 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 the first ten commands. Yeah, Lord, I know. I got angry. Get thee ten more. I'm getting the ten more stones. Get thee two more stones and come up to the mountain. Do you know that the original ten commandments were broken? They were in pieces. 
That was the original, the Ten Commandments. Here is the original Jeremiah. One was broken and one was burned. And you know what God's going to do? Take the again another row and write in it all the former words that were in the first row, which Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, had burned. Now Jeremiah becomes the author of his book. The first one written by Beirut. Now God says, I want you to write. You see how it says that Jehoiakim burned the Bible? Who burned it? 23. Who burned it? Jehudai. The king didn't do it. But the king allowed it to happen. Oh, Ahab was charged with killing Naaman for the vineyard. He didn't do it. Mrs. Mrs. Ahab did it. Jezebel. You know why you don't want to stand in office? Because you may be held responsible for something that you allowed to happen even though you did not do it. You got to be very careful. The king has the charge of burning the Bible and he didn't do it. I say Bible because I want you to get this point straight and through. And thou shalt say to Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Thus saith the Lord, Thou hast burnt this roll. Saying, Why hast thou written therein, saying, The king of Babylon shall certainly come and destroy this land, and shall cause to cease from thence man and beast. That's what Jeremiah wrote. That's what angered the king. Can you find that in anywhere in Jeremiah? Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why hast thou written there that the king of Babylon shall certainly come and destroy this land and shall cause to cease from thence man and beast? Those words are ashes upon the king's heart. When that was read to the king, that's when the Bible was burned. And here it is in verse 29. It is back in print. Second to the original. We are in the second writing of Jeremiah. And God quoted to you what you did not see in the first writing. That you cannot see in the original. Because it's burnt. And God says, oh, I'll just put it over here. This, of that whole world of three pages or whatever it was. This is what angered the king. It's burnt. You can't read it. So I'll tell you what it is. The king of Babylon shall certainly come and destroy this land and shall cause to see it from thence man and beast. That's burnt up, but you just read it. You didn't think you could read the originals that Jeremiah that got the king so angry. You didn't think. That was read before all the people at the temple. That was read before all the princes and all the scribes in their little meeting here. That was read before the king. It was destroyed before the king. And yet God says, ha ha. I'll reprint it. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, He shall never none to he shall have he shall never none he shall yeah, he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out in day to the heat. Daytime is hot, desert climate. And in the night to the frost. Got frosty. That's the, thing, that's the thing to where you want your sheep to be out there, frosty. And I will punish him and his seed and his servants for their iniquity. And I will bring upon them and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem and upon the men of Judah all the evil that I have pronounced against them because they hearken not. What is the crime of Judah? When Baruch preached before the people, no one repented. No one got right. The king heard the word. The king took the word and had it burned and did not try to stop it. Nobody repented. And God says, that's it. I'm going through it with it. What through with what, God? I'm going to go through the evil.
and scholars will mess up all oh, the originals, this and that, and how the men wrote it, and you can fuss around all that, and you forget, you know what? You are a sinner, and if you are in your sins, you will be condemned before God, and you will pay for your own sins. You will suffer the consequences. There will be evil upon your life unless you put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ today. All right. You ready? You ready for the joke? Then Jeremiah took another roll and gave it to Baruch, the scribe. Well, oh, got to put that back in there. The son of Neriah, who wrote therein from the mouth of Jeremiah, verse 4. This is the second writing, the second time, and looks like Jeremiah may be quoting from memory. Maybe. Or God's whispering in his ear. But what if it is being quoted by memory? The second to the originals is... Well, let's see, what, uh, what was it again? Isn't that a joke to the scholars? The, the hearth holds the original of ashes. And yet, watch this. The mouth of all the words of the book which Jeho Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, had burned in the fire. Gone. The originals are gone. And there were added besides unto them many like words. You know the only one who can add to the Bible is God. God told Jeremiah, he says, sit down and write. All right, what did I write? The, big, the king of Babylon shall certainly come and destroy this land. It shall cause the cease from then man and beast. That was in the original. You want to know what was added to it? I can tell you what was added to it. You ready? Therefore, thus saith the Lord of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out in the day, cast out in the day to the heat, and in in the night to the frost. I will punish him and his seed and his servants for their iniquity. And I will bring upon them and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem and upon the men of Judah all the evil that I have pronounced against them, but they hearken not. That is what has been added to what Jeremiah wrote. Had they not burned the roll, had they gotten right, uh, verses uh, 30 and 31 would have been so much different. The originals are burned. The originals are gone. And unlike Moses, God said, Jeremiah, that's a good job. You copied it just as I told you the second time. But hold on. Baruch, pick up that pencil. Pick up that pen. Well, Jeremiah, we, we, God has me write more. But Jeremiah... The scholars are not going to like that you added to the word. Just take the pen and write. I know there were no verses, but write verses 30 and 31 in addition to what we wrote already. But Jeremiah, the Bible says we're not to add to the word of God. We're not adding. God is. But God, we're not supposed to subtract from the word of God. We're not. We haven't subtracted nothing. But we're adding, Jeremiah. It's in the law. We're not supposed to. We're not adding, Baruch. Calm down. God is adding. How's that? So you get scholars today out of chapter 36. What they enjoy is that Jeremiah took another row and Baruch wrote again. They take, oh, we added. See, it's allowed. It's added. But it's not from God. It is not the words of God. It is not from the voice of God. It is not inspiration by God. Matter of fact, you destroy God. You destroy Jesus Christ. You destroy salvation. You destroy the blood. You destroy hell. You destroy heaven. You destroy my mansion. Yet by God adding to his word of the authority who can, he has not changed the Bible. All he says, I'm going to do exactly what I'm going to tell you I'm going to do, because you have not repented.
Boy, I tell you, one day these scholars are going to stand before God and they're going to be quaking in their boots. God told man, find me a commandment in the Bible where, where the Bible says to God, you can't act. Now, the Bible has been sealed. God won't speak to us anymore but outside the Bible. The Bible is sealed, written, finished, and done. But unto them, we wouldn't have the rest of the chapters of Jeremiah if God didn't allow him to add. Man subtracted, he burned it. That's, that's a big subtraction. Moses subtracted from the word of God. He broke them. 